That's, that's all. Even. Like one out of a hundred. But when they got baptized in the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, so many people were getting healed. And so they, they taught it was very important to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because that's the power of God. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the entrance way into all the gifts of the Spirit. Some people minimize that. They think it's not necessary, it's not important. It builds up it builds up your personal relationship with God. It empowers you to, to do things that you couldn't do otherwise. So so yes. what I want to do right now, if, is there anybody, and I'm going to just stop my message right now, is there anybody here who has not been baptized in the Holy Spirit who would like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Is there anybody that has not, has not been baptized in the Holy Spirit that wants to? Everybody's baptized in the Holy Spirit? Okay. Good. We got that settled. Everything, everyone's baptized in the Holy Spirit, which means that when I call for people to, to, to pray for the sick, I'm going to call you people in the, in the audience here to, to do it because you've been baptized. That was one of the things that, I, unless you're baptized in the Spirit, I wasn't going to have you pray. Not that you couldn't heal the sick otherwise, but the percentage would be a lot higher if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. But that's why I, I wanted to mention that. Um, there's a principle in the Bible taught by Pat Robertson uh, with his bestseller, The, the Secret Kingdom where he says there's a law of use. In other words, the more you do something, the greater success you will have. Because Pat Robertson has been asked several times, how do you, they pray for the sick in, in their, uh, sometimes in their, uh, their uh, TV show, and they get words of knowledge. They're saying uh, somebody's leg is being healed, somebody's back is being healed. Sometimes they even mention names. Marcy is being healed of cancer, whatever. And so they're asked, how do you do this? How, how, how do you... You work in these gifts. And Pat Robbins said, it's just practice. The more you do it, the more accurate you become. And you're able to do more for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, so you got to keep practicing. As Christians, you got to keep practicing. It's like I have to practice my, my speaking in tongues. And a week later, I had the, the full-blown thing. So, okay. Um, it's just like that with healing. The more you do it, the more you step out, the more you're going to see people get healed. If you don't step out, you're not going to see anything happen. So you, you, you step out in faith. And, and also another thing is don't be discouraged by small beginnings. That's right. Uh, if, you, if something, you're doing something, praying for someone, praying for something to happen, and it doesn't happen initially, don't give up. Don't get discouraged. There was a word that came forward, discouraged. And um, no, don't be discouraged because God, if, it, if it's God's will, if you're praying something, you know it's God's will, do not give up. I used to teach discipleship classes at my church uh, many, many years ago, 20-some years ago, and I told them about the promises God has given me. He's given me five promises, and the Lord had said they're going to happen like one after the other. I didn't know it would be 25 years later, but I still needed the, needed the answers to all of those prayers. Yeah. But I taught them, don't, if God gives you a promise, don't ever give up hope on that promise. Amen. It's very important to hold on, because God has a timing for everything. Yes. He has a timing for everything. If you come here and you're sick and you don't get healed, don't be discouraged. You might be healed on the way home. You might be healed when you're yeah. in your own prayer time. Yeah. The thing is that God has a timing for everything. But I believe if somebody gets prayed for today, they're going to be healed. In the, in the healing ministry that we have, we have our church, we tell the people, make sure when you pray for people, believe that they're going to be healed instantly. Yeah. Believe that they're going to be healed instantly. Because if you go there and say, well, I wonder if they're be healed. You know, if, I wonder if people will be healed today. You're not going to see too much uh, evidence of healing. There was a guy in our church. He was praying for this woman. Her mother was dying, and, she, and, the, and he came. He wasn't part of the healing team, and he was a novice. And he came forward, and he says, he says well, if, you're, if your mother dies, and this and that, he kept on going on and on. And he was like, all this doubt and negative unbelief, he was praying over this girl. And I went to him after the service, I said, that's not how you pray. Yeah. When you pray for the sick, you don't pray like that. You pray hope, you pray faith. Yeah. So he's like, well, I didn't know that. I said, so I said, yeah. So just pray in faith when you pray. <laughs> <laughs> In Mark 16, 18, it says something unusual. It says, they shall pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. That's a strange verse. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if any of you have ever seen on television, yeah, people, yeah. he, he's, he's, yeah. usually there are churches in the South. Yeah. People, and I'm not saying everybody in the South is ignorant, but, but usually there are ch these churches, they bring snakes to the altar, yeah. and they believe that, that, that they're not going to be bitten, if they're going to get bitten, they're not going to get killed by it, or they drink deadly poison or drink it. And some people have died yeah. because they've done that. Yeah. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. Right. He wasn't talking about testing God, which is what they were doing. Right. There's only one place in the Bible where it says you can test God, and that's in Malachi where it's just about your giving. Right. That's the only place 
And then God says, test me in this. Yeah. And I'll, I'll pour out the blessing. <laughs> It will overflow and you will be able to So that's the only time you test God. The real, the real understanding of the snakes is found in a different passage that's in the Bible. That's uh, Acts chapter 28, verse 1 through 9. And since we got, we got time today, uh, we're going to turn to it. I was going to turn to it if we didn't have time, but since we don't have that many people here, not as many people to pray for, I think it's okay that we read it. But this is what God, was, Jesus was talking about, about snakes. This was um, Paul who was going to Rome, and there was a shipwreck, and they landed on the island of Malta. And this is what it says in verse 1. It says, once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood. And as he put on the fire, a viper, which is his serpent, yeah. driven out by the heat, fastened itself to his hand, to Paul's hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer, for he has escaped from the sea. For though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. This, the people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall over dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said, he is a god. <laughs> so they thought this guy might have been a murderer. All of a sudden, this snake is, is, is on him, and nothing happens. They think this guy must be super, you know, one of the gods, whatever. It says, and it was, there was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and for three days and entertained us in hospitality. His father was sick in bed. Suffering from fever and dysentery, I don't know how to pronounce that name, dysentery. Paul went to see him and after prayer placed his hands on him and healed him. And when this happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were healed. So that's what Jesus was talking about. If you're working to work a ministry and have a snake happens up to bite you or whatever that comes around you, or there's nothing poison you drinking, God will protect you. Yeah. Now there's a there is a time in our life that we're all gonna die. But God will protect you until it's your time to go. Right. And that's what he's talking about, that snake. Because people, you know, by watching that TV, I think how ignorant these people are. You know, they're, they're doing this, and really mocking God is what they're doing. People watch this and say, these Christians are weird, they're nuts, they're foolish. And again, people have died for carrying these snakes in their, in their services, and that's not what God wants, to, to be at the altar and pass out dead. Okay. Um, the other passage is John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. It's the Gospel of John. It's the fourth book of the New Testament. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. And this is for all of us as believers. John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. And this is Jesus speaking. Now wait till everybody gets there. Jesus is speaking in John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. He says, I tell you the truth. Anyone, again, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask for anything in my name and I will do it. Now, what is he talking about? What types of things says you have faith you can do anything? There's a lot of churches out there that don't believe in healings. And yet, if you look at the context of what Jesus is talking about, let's go one verse be before that to get the context of what he's talking about. In, I have the NIV version. It says, because believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. He's talking about the miracles that he was doing. So when he's saying you can do all things, if you believe in me. He's talking about the works that he was doing, the miracles that he was doing. So, all believers could do these miracles. Jesus, remember, only traveled in Israel. That was a very small part of the, land, of, the, of the world. He says we would do even greater things than him. How is that possible? Because we are in all different parts of the world. Us believers, right now the gospel is going throughout the world. And so we can do more than Jesus because Jesus was limited to a three and a half year ministry and in the nation of Israel only. So, yes, we could do greater works. 
I've heard of a ministry that's, that's raised 60 people from the dead. Jesus didn't raise that many people from the dead. But there's other ministries I've heard that they had 29 or 11 or 1 or 2 raised from the dead. So I don't know how many Jesus raised it. It was 2 or 3. But he didn't raise it. Now we know of the scripture. He may have done many more because John says, if I wrote at the end of his book, he says, if I tell you all the things that Jesus said, there might not be enough books to, to, to hold on. To. So, so he did more than what's in the Bible. But he gave us what we needed to know. Right. So, we. So now. So now that we can, now that we understand that we can heal the sick, God has given us the authority to heal the sick. Now we didn't need to know how to heal the sick. How do we go about doing that? One is the laying on of hands. That's the, the most obvious. That happens more than in any way in the Bible. Laying on of hands. And uh, forget the gentleman's name. But he was a. Uh, Faith healer, he's the first, the first uh, guy in the faith movement. Uh, Hagen, he, 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 uh, he wrote a he wrote the best book I've seen on the gifts of the spirit, and he always talked about it. laying on hands on the sick as being very the most important way to heal the sick. The best way is to heal the sick. Though if you're saying fifty thousand, you can't lay hands on the, on the sick, uh, but you can pray for them. They can heal them themselves. Another way that God heals the sick is through the anointing with oil. Uh, James chapter uh, 5, verse 15 and 16 tells us that, that uh, ask for the elders of the church and have them pray, have them pray for you. And it says, it says that uh, anoint them with oil. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. And he also said, confess your sins one to another. Now, now the thing is that sometimes people are prevented from receiving healing because they have sin in their life. And people don't like to hear that, but if you have bitterness in your heart or unforgiveness, that can cause a disease. Arthritis oftentimes comes into a people's lives when they have bitterness in their heart. Many diseases come into people's lives. I heard somebody who was just recently, this week, that People who are involved in the Masonic Lodge, according to Sid Ross program that a speaker, he said he noticed that very frequently people who were involved in the Masonic Lodge had skin issues, skin problems. So if you're involved in the occult or involved in different false religions, because Masonic Lodge is a religion, they teach that if you're a good Masonic Lodge, you're going to heaven. It has nothing to do with Jesus. It's just being a member of the Masonic Lodge. And yet, People are getting skin diseases. Some people were involved in that, that uh, cult. And all mainline, and not mainline, but all conservative Christian churches teach that the Masonic Lodge is, is not of God and you should not be part of it. The founding fathers, many of them were involved in the Masonic Lodge. Even George Washington. But later on, he gave up on the Masonic Lodge. Fortunately, got out of it. And he was a believer. People say that he was just a deist. He prayed an hour a day. If he, was praying, if he was a deist and didn't believe that God intervened in the life of, of a man, as a deist is a person that believes in a God who just made, set the world, world and earth in motion and doesn't intervene in people's lives. Well, if he didn't believe in God, why would he pray for an hour a day? Mm -hmm. Obviously, and there's so many stories about him that tell us that we you know he was a believer in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, even uh, President Lincoln was not a believer until he became president. His mother was a, a real Bible believer, a real strong evangelical Christian, and he didn't believe until his son died. And when his son died, he gave his life to the Lord. And so as a president, he was a believer, and God worked for him in great and mighty ways. So, okay, uh, the prayer of faith, I haven't mentioned that. Now, the other thing that, uh, that James says is the prayer of faith. Again, when you pray for people, don't pray in unbelief, don't pray in doubt. Pray in faith, believing that what you ask for will come to pass. And encourage people when you pray for them. I remember a friend of mine, he's coming tomorrow to my church, unbelievable, right? He's, my brother's coming, he's, not, he's, he's friends of mine that have known since grammar school and high school, and my brother, they never step foot in a Pentecostal church. They don't even, they, they don't know what they're, they're, they're getting into. <laughs> yeah. um, Anyway, a friend of mine, we were debating one time when I was a new believer uh, about creation and evolution. My friend was an evolutionist. And, you know, at that time, he was, he was an atheist. Uh, kind of like an agnostic, but mo mostly an atheist. 
And we, we debated for half an hour. I finally said, Jim, I said, wait, we're getting nowhere. I said, I said, Jim, I'm a Christian, and I pray. And I believe that God answers my prayers. I'm praying for you. I said, someday you're going to be a Christian. Praise God. He didn't answer. He didn't say anything. He didn't say anything to me. Well, since that time, he became an agnostic. <laughs> not sure. Not sure. But, but maybe there's a About three or four years ago, he had his child baptized, and I go to Jim, I said, why are you baptizing a child when you're not a Christian? He says, I am a Christian. I said, you're a Christian? And he's, he doesn't believe the Bible. He says, yeah, I'm a Christian. I, you know, basically, he didn't believe the Bible literally. He didn't believe the Bible the way it is. But he's getting closer. <laughs> so when it comes tomorrow, hopefully he looks up a little. I don't know. I don't know what God's going to do. But uh, I believe I told him 20 some years ago that he's going to be saved. And I believe God answers our prayers. Yes. And I believe it's God's will that everybody gets saved. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. some people just have hard hearts. Yeah. But yeah. my friend's getting closer and closer. A little bit. It's taking many years.